Hello everyone. Today we will study what are the various principles of design with respect to fashion design. The principles of design are the rules by which a designer uses the various elements like line, shape, form, color and texture. Five principles are balance, proportion or scale, harmony, rhythm and emphasis. First we will study what is balance. Balance is when balance is created when parts of a design are equally distributed to create a sense of stability. It can be physical balance as well as visual balance. The different types of balance are symmetrical or a formal balance, asymmetrical or informal balance, radial balance, vertical balance and horizontal balance. Again here vertical and horizontal balance are part of the symmetrical balance. First we study the symmetrical or the formal balance. The main point in this kind of balance is that the left and the right side or the top or the bottom side they are identical in with respect to a central axis or a central line. The second is a asymmetrical or the informal balance where parts of a design are not identical to each other but they are equal in visual weight. For example, in the first figure, uh, consider a central axis going from top to bottom or going from left to right. You will not see identical elements anywhere across the central axis. Similarly, in the first dress, it is an asymmetrical shoulder dress and an asymmetrical skirt. Even though they are asymmetrical, visually the weight is balanced. That is why it is called an asymmetrical or a formal balance. Third type of balance is a radial balance. It is similar to a radius of a circle. The design elements radiate outward from the center. In the first example, the design seems to radiate from the center going outside. Similarly here, and here it is seemingly going outside. So this type of examples in which the arrangement is from center towards the outside is called a radial balance. Radial balance is also called a formal balance because once you divide it from the center, the left and the right sides or the top and the bottom are equal, are similar to each other. Okay. Then the vertical balance. It is again a part of a formal balance in which the top and the bottom parts are equal. Horizontal balance is a balance in which the left and the right parts are equal. These are the various examples of horizontal balance. So if you draw a line, the left and the right side of the dresses are similar. So it gives an appearance of formal balance. The next element of design is emphasis. So what is emphasis? Emphasis is a point of attention in a design. It is a main focal point. It focuses attention of one feature and keeps everything else secondary. So other things become secondary in this. It is the feature in which attracts everyone which attracts everyone's eyes. Again, it is a focal point. There are various ways in which we can create emphasis. It can be created through size, placement, color and use of lines. This is called the most personal aspect of a design. Why? Because it is dependent totally on a designer on which part of the design, which part of the dress to emphasize. So it depends on designer to designer to create a focal point. That is why it is called the most personal aspect. In these examples, you can see various focal points being used in these dresses. For example, in the first dress, you can see the red color. Emphasis is given to the bright colors. In the second example, this off-shoulder 
is a point of emphasis. In the third example, this brooch used here is a point of emphasis. And in the fourth example, the black belt in the central is the point of emphasis. The next is proportion. Proportion is a comparative relationship between element in a design with respect to its size. So, proportion cannot be singularly handled. It is always a comparison of two things with respect to one another. The ratio of one part to the whole. So that things just look right. In these examples, we, are, we can see three dresses. In the first dress, we can see the flask print is too big as compared to the size of the dress. So we can say that this print is not proportional to the dress. In the second example, the size of the print is looking pleasing to the eye with respect to the size of the dress. So we can say that the flask print is proportional to the dress. In the third example, the print is seemingly little smaller than what is pleasing to the eye. Still, as compared to the first one, the second and the third prints are in proportion to the size of the garment. The next is rhythm. So, what is rhythm? Rhythm is defined as a continuous, recurrent, organized movement. It is similar to so you can compare it to the rhythm in music in which it goes from one beat to another in a systematic manner after repeated intervals of time. So it allows for underlying unity and variety in a design. We can create rhythm in five different ways. The first is rhythm by repetition, second rhythm by gradation, third rhythm by transition, fourth rhythm by opposition and fifth rhythm by radiation. Rhythm by repetition. It can be used by repeated lines, shapes, forms, colors, textures or patterns. So what happens is when we repeat one element several number of times it creates a sense of rhythm. In this example we can see a repeated use of black colored polka dots. In this example, we can see a repeated use of lines. It creates a sense of rhythm, which is rhythm by repetition. The second example is rhythm by gradation. What gradations mean is, it is completed by increasing or decreasing one or more qualities, such as height or width or overall size. So, when there is a gradual increase, or decrease in size or weight or intensities of color it show it is said to be rhythm by gradation for example here we can see the colors going from light to dark the lines from thin to thick size from small to large similarly in this example we can see the ruffles on the dresses going from large to small the next example is rhythm by gradation. By gradation, it means a gradual, continuous change in one element. Here, the change element is the color. So, we can see a gradual change from dark to light or light to dark in this dress. Similarly, there is no pause, there is no full stop here. It is a continuous change. Next is rhythm by transition. It is often subtle. It leads eye in a gentle, continuous, uninterrupted visual flow from one area to another or one object to another. Examples of such rhythm by transition are arches, arch doorways, which are much smoother, less abrupt than doorways with square corners. Curved lines are a sign of transition because they are continuously changing uninterruptedly very gently leading your eye from one point to another. 
in this dress if we see the shape of this dress is continuously changing from a rectangular shape gradually turning into a bell shape so this is written by transition next comes the rhythm by opposition what it means is it is the direct placement of line forms colors to create opposition by an abrupt change till now we were studying rhythm by gradual and various changes but now we will study rhythm by abrupt change for example ornate ornate objects placed in a simple background it creates an abrupt change old versus new complementary colors next to each other intersecting lines and square corners what we mean by these examples is all the objects given in this examples are opposite to each other that is why they give a sense of vibration to each other and they emphasize each other that's why it is rhythm by opposition in this example we can see the various garments in which rhythm by opposition is achieved through colors then comes rhythm by radiation here all parts of the composition are balanced and repeated around a central axis so you can see in all the examples there is a central axis and the composition is going radiating from it in this dress or in a sub in the circular format it is radiating from a central point next harmony the blending of all components of a design it is a pleasing relationship within the design in color texture size and line harmony is achieved when unity and variety are effectively combined harmony by unity unity is applying consistent use of lines color and texture within a design to be harmonious unity can be achieved through matching and coordination in this example we can say that unity is achieved through the use of black color harmony by variety variety can relieve the monotony by giving the eye a number of different details to look at in this example there are a lot of details given in the top and a lot of details in the form of ruffles in the skirt so when you see this dress as a whole you have a lot of things to see to so which relieves monotony in a design so how is harmony achieved in this example what can you see unity is achieved by the repetition of red and black colors so there is a repeated use of red here here and black color variety is achieved by the texture given below the belt and the flower above these two elements add variety to the design similarly in the next example the neutral colors of the entire dress the vertical lines the brown repeats give unity to the design and the variety is achieved through the horizontal belt again in this example how do you think harmony is achieved here the unity aspect of harmony is achieved through the gray lines throughout fitted and repeating lines variety is achieved by adding bows and interest slit in the front of the dress so these were all the various principles of design with respect to fashion design thank you so much for listening to this video